Good evening, everybody. I'm going to wait a few minutes to give everybody some time to make their way into the webinar, and then we'll get started. Hi there, for those that are just joining us, we're waiting a couple minutes to give everybody some time to join the webinar and then we are getting started. All right, so it looks like we've had a couple more people hop on. I'm sure we'll have a couple more people join us as we move along, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm going to be leading you through the webinar tonight. My name is Ariel. I'm the Partnerships Manager here at Prompt. I also lead and coordinate all of our boot camps, as well as support our independent counselors and all the other high schools that we work with. Uh, so we're super excited to have you all here this evening in this very important webinar about crossing the finish line. Um, I want to, before we get started, just give a, make sure that I have everything in order here. As we still, I see a couple more people joining us. Hello, welcome. All righty. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I wanted to shout out Ms. Edwards. Thank you so much for coordinating this and allowing us to be here tonight and share this information with your families. Um, I'm going to pause 
periodically throughout the presentation. Um, we have a lot to cover and not that much time, but please, if you have any questions, feel free to utilize the chat feature or the Q&A feature. I'll be monitoring those as we move through for any questions, but let's go ahead and get started because like I said, there's, there is a lot to cover this evening. So we are going to start off by reviewing some of the things that we shared in our personal statement webinars, if any of you were able to attend, but just a little refresher on what the data tells us about essays, admissions, uh, the importance of college essays in the process. Again, um, they're very important. They've always been important, but since schools have gone test optional, they've become even more important. So we're going to just run through that because you know it's it's a great thing to just be reminded of. Then we'll brush up on the five traits that schools are looking for in their applicants. And then we'll head into uh, some of the most common supplemental essays that you'll see. Um, we'll talk a little bit about revisions and feedback, how you should be starting and ending your supplemental essays, and then just some other bonus material about um, polishing your essays and really getting things you know, across that finish line. Um, I will stick around for a bit at the end for any remaining Q&A. If there's anything that you wanted to know that maybe we didn't quite get to, that will be your chance to, um, to ask, all right? So as a reminder, um, we always talk about this lawsuit against Harvard that allowed this unprecedented look into their their, how they conduct admissions, which was a pretty big deal because schools usually keep that kind of info under lock and key. And what it essentially revealed is that colleges are using a holistic admissions process. And the personal part of the application is actually a key decision criteria. So when I'm talking to families and students, they are often focused on that academic score. So that's things like your grades, your GPA, your transcript, that school that you go to, the particular school that you go to, and then test scores if you decided to, to take those. So something to keep in mind is that um, I always tell students and families when I'm speaking with them, so think about how you're picking your schools, right? Um, what you designate as a reach school or a safety school is often based on your academics, right? Do you have the GPA, the test scores that kind of match up with that particular population? So if you look at an applicant pool for a particular school and all of the students have the same GPA and test scores, what's left to differentiate them? Um, and it's these things that make up these other two scores and categories here um, that you see on your screen. So we have your personal score, which consists of your activities and how you write about them. Essays, which is just as much what you write about as it is how you write about it. Rec letters, and then interviews if that applies to your particular situation. And then we have the other priorities category, which is the category that I say is kind of um, at this point, there's not too much that students can do about it, right? So the first point, demonstrated interest, which we're going to speak about a lot tonight, actually ties back to your essay. So I'm going to skip that point, but things like family income, whether you're first generation or not, where you're located in the world, whether you're a legacy or an athlete, those are things that you can't really change at this point. So we bring our focus back to that personal score. And if we take a closer look at that personal score, demonstrated interest, which I'll lump in, has to do with your essays, your activities, you have to write about them. And then your rec letters, your teachers, your counselors, they're looking at things you wrote about so they can see what points they need to highlight and what's important to you. And then if you get an interview for a school, they're going to be asking you about things that you wrote about. All right, so your essays really are so, so important and can make such a huge difference in your application process as a whole. I briefly mentioned that um, lawsuit against Harvard. This is just a closer look at some data pulled from that uh, lawsuit and that study. And it found that strong college essays can increase your admissions chances by up to 10 times or more. That's so much. Um, just to explain this little chart that you see here um, of this particular um, applicant pool from this time period during the lawsuit, there are 42% of applicants that were above Harvard's academic bar. I like to just pause there because I'm like, okay, this is Harvard. 
and 42% of the people applying were above the academic bar. So if you look at that 42%, still only 13% of those students were actually accepted. So you start thinking, what is differentiating them? And it's those things that we were just discussing, your personal score and then those other priorities as well. So don't get all wrapped up in your academics and make sure that you are spending enough time focusing on your essays because they really can make a pretty big difference. And just a quick overview too um, of the different types of essays. So we're all on the same page. Um, you have your personal statement and your school specific supplements. So personal statement is the essay that most people think of when they hear college essay. That's your main, um, your main essay that's used across multiple applications for different schools. So the example that we give is, ha ha, the most common, the common app essay, uh, but you also have Apply Texas, I would throw the UC personal insight questions in here, and then you have coalition app as well. So um, that personal statement, it's specific still, but more broad because it's going to multiple schools. All right, and then your school specific supplements are the many other essays that you may need to write that are just as important as your personal statement. And the reason for that is that demonstrated interest point that we mentioned earlier. So um, since, schools have gone test optional, they're really looking to these essays to get to know students and make sure that students are doing their homework, that they've taken the time to imagine themselves on campus. They have a clear idea of how going to that school is going to help them and their goals. So we wanna make sure that um, in the school specific supplements, your students are taking the time to share specifically why um, this school is a good fit and share more about who they are and how their mind works with these schools. So most selective schools have at least one supplement, but they usually have a handful, like two to three. And then common prompts for these essays are, why us? Why this major? Describe an activity. But it also includes things like your activities list, your additional information section, and the COVID-19 essay as well. So, um, on top of that, there's also very creative prompts like University of Chicago is known for their, their prompts, things like where, where is Waldo? What does it mean to be divisible by zero? Things like that. So you can have a wide range of topics that you may be responding to. So before we get into specifics about supplements, I just want to touch on these things to think about as you are you know, trying to cross the finish line and finish up your essays, we want to make sure that you are asking yourself um, these questions and keeping these points in mind. But we always remind students and say over and over again, the purpose or the goal of your college application is to prove you'll be successful in college and beyond. So what is it? What does that mean exactly? Um, you want to make sure that you um, prove that you're going to graduate and do well in your classes. Schools want to know that you're going to contribute positively to their community and what's going on on campus. They want to know that you're going to have a positive impact on whatever you choose to do in the future. And they want to have an understanding of how attending their school specifically is going to help you achieve your goals or put you on the path to achieving your goals. All right, so that last point again points back to demonstrated interest that we were just discussing. All right, so as you are writing your essays and finishing things up, you want to look at the things you chose to write about and ask yourself, does this prove I will be successful in college and beyond? And then another point that we want you to think about as you are writing and revising is, do these things that I chose to write about showcase my top trait or my top one to two traits? So these are the five traits that we know schools are looking for in their applicants after reading tens of thousands of essays and chatting with admissions readers. Um, it's drive, intellectual curiosity, initiative, contribution, and diversity of experiences. So I'm not going to go through the definitions or examples of these traits um, because I'm pretty sure you all are already familiar with them, but in case you are not or you're wanting to learn more, definitely um, sign into your prompt account or create a prompt account and go through some of our exercises, they're free. And you can um, identify which of these five traits is your top trait. All right, so whenever you're thinking about what you should be writing about, ask yourself, does this prove I will be successful in college and beyond? And does it showcase my top trait? 
All right, very important things to think about as you are writing and revising your essays. So let's chat about some of the most common supplemental prompts that there are. So I think at the top of the list would be why us and why this major? Um, so something to keep in mind for these two essays, they're similar but different. Um, but in both of these essays, you wanna make sure that you are covering academic interests, which I think again is what most students gravitate towards in terms of what they think about including in these essays. Um, so you wanna talk about what you're interested in specifically comparing that to what the school's offerings are, um, both in your choice of major and your interests outside of it. So you want to have as much opportunity, take advantage of the opportunity to share as much about who you are as possible. So um, there's some people that are very clear on what they love to study, but if you do have other academic interests as well, um, it would be awesome to get as specific as possible here. And again, you will need to do your research to make sure that you are, um, covering very specific things for this school because they will be paying attention. Um, something that students often forget to include are the non-academic interests. So schools don't just want to see who you are inside of the classroom. They want to know who you are outside of the classroom as well. So think about your hobbies and things that you like to do for fun. What types of activities and experiences does this school have that coincide with what your specific interests are. Um, and again, make sure that you're being as specific as possible. And if you can find things that are unique to that school, even better. Some other optional categories here to think about your values and seeing how they align with the school's mission, how your personality and values will um, fit in with the school's culture thinking about your learning style and how different teachers may accommodate that in different ways, um, specific ways you can contribute to the school's community, which also goes back to proving you'll be successful in college and beyond, um, and things to avoid, location. So a lot of students think of this as one of the top reasons, but you have to imagine that there are, for example, if you wanna to apply to NYU and you say that it's because, one reason is because you've always wanted to live in New York City, there are so many schools in New York City. So that doesn't really show that you have done your research and are interested in this particular school. So similarly, things like school rankings, um, big platitudes about schools faculty, these are all things that can often apply to multiple schools, especially if you're applying to prestigious institutions. So avoid kind of generalizations and be as specific as you possibly can. We can't say that enough. So some other common supplemental essay topics, um, describe an activity is really common, um, prompts that have to do with leadership, uh, prompts surrounding community service or contributions, intellectual curiosity is one that we're starting to see a lot, and then um, prompts that ask you about your passions. So something that we discuss with students as they are thinking about prompts like this and creative prompts as well, is we wanna make sure that you are not taking a prompt just at face value and thinking about strategic ways that you can share more about who you are, how your mind works within these supplemental essays. All right, so for example, for describing activity, you may really love fishing, but, Maybe you have an extracurricular activity that coincides with your um, desire to be a doctor. Like maybe you, um, I don't know, maybe you volunteer at a hospital every week and you interact with patients and do things like that. So that's kind of a more, um, that shares more about who you are, what your interests are, um, gives more of a picture of how you are already pursuing your interests, how you might be successful in college and beyond as opposed to just sharing like a random fact about you. There are times and places for those types of things, but you just wanna be very mindful and make sure you're really taking advantage of all the space you have to share more about who you are. Um, the better that you are able to have your reader get to know you, the better your chance of standing out and um, being successful. All right, I realize that I have not yet paused for questions. I don't think anything has come in in the chat, but I will pause right now, check the Q&A in the chat. Feel free to include anything. 
I'm sorry, my dog is chewing on her bone right next to me. I'm not sure if you all can hear that. Okay, so it looks like there aren't any questions for right now. I think I'm going to keep moving because we are quickly running out of time. Oh, just had a question pop in. Will you also discuss early action and early decision? Sure, so um, early action, early decision can be very confusing. Um, early action is, well, maybe it's easier to start with early decision. So if you have one school that you know you absolutely want to go to hands down, um, you can apply early decision. If you get accepted to that school, it is then a binding agreement. So if you get accepted to that school, you must go to that school. Um, if you have maybe a handful of schools that you're interested in, um, you can apply early action. And this just means that you are applying in advance of regular decision deadlines, but pushing in your application in advance, showing schools that you have that early interest. And applying early can sometimes help you um, in your chances of getting into a particular school. Uh, you'll have to check your specific school that you're interested in because not every school offers early action and early decision. So that's something that you can find on your school's websites. But it can be a good tool or strategy if you have an idea of schools that you really, really want to go to um, just by pushing, pushing your applications ahead and really um, showing that interest that you may have. That's a good question. All right, so starting and ending your essay, um, and we'll kind of head into tips for revising here. So something to think about for your supplemental essays is the way that they start and end is different than how you're going to be starting and ending your personal statement. Um, with your personal statement, you have much more word count to work with. That's usually around 650 words. And your supplemental essays are often shorter, around 100 to 250 words. Um, and that can vary, but just on average. So we wanna make sure that when you're approaching um, responding to these supplemental essays, that you're being very direct. So for these supplemental essays, schools are really looking for a direct answer to the prompt basically right away. So we say answer the prompt in one to two words, but we mean one to, one to two sentences. It's a small typo. Um, so we just wanna provide a sense of what's going on. So the problem, the activity, the situation, um, what the outcome was of that particular situation and what your impact was. If you're able to share some specific data and quantitative information, even better. And then the steps that you took to get there. So that's kind of how you should be thinking about how to approach responding to your um, supplemental essays. So again, you wanna make sure that you're starting right away by answering the prompt in the first one to two sentences, um, setting the context for what the problem activity situation was, moving into what the outcome of that situation was and sharing your specific impact with data if you can, and then the steps that you took to get there. So once you finish these essays, since you don't have that much word count, you don't need to kind of wrap things up with a neat bow. You can kind of just end abruptly, just make sure that you're covering all the content needed and addressing all the parts of the prompt, all right? And again, if you have longer essays, you can often tie things, you know, conclude things more neatly, but that's not entirely necessary for these, these shorter prompts. Um, so as we move into talking about revising, something that's very important is how to ask for feedback on your writing. So um, we, working with students, we find that they often miss two to three opportunities to improve their content. And there's really two main reasons for that. The first is that they procrastinate and they wait way too long. And so they're not able to revise their essays as often as they probably should. And then the second is that students feel like they are really strong writers and they don't need anyone to look at it or they feel confident in what they're doing. So for these students, I like to lovingly remind them that even authors have editors, right? So it's so important to get feedback on your writing to make sure that you aren't missing anything, um, just to get a new perspective. Um, also, these college essays, um, students have not written for this type of audience 
previously. So they're used to writing for teachers, um, parents maybe, peers maybe, but not for admissions readers. And the things that admissions readers are looking for are different than things that a teacher um, is looking for. Even a journalist who's, you know, maybe handpicking their favorite essays for uh, to share in the New York Times or what have you. All right, so it's very important to ask for feedback and to be smart about who you're getting feedback from. Um, and good feedback is more than just grammar and syntax and proofreading, all right? So we wanna make sure that you have um, the optimal content and structure uh, for this type of essay, because again, you're writing for a very specific audience. These readers are spending on average 90 seconds per essay, so you don't have that much time. Uh, we need to make sure your essays are clear, concise, and in your own voice, while proving you'll be successful in college and beyond, and also um, showcasing your top trade. So when you're thinking about your content, you wanna make sure that you're first of all answering the prompt, that's the most important. And then, um, like I said, does it prove you'll be successful in college and beyond? And does it showcase your top five traits? Um, and for supplements, does it show your reader something new that isn't in your personal statement? Your supplements are the school's opportunity to get a look into how your mind works outside of, or in addition to what you shared in your personal statement. All right. And structure, does the reader understand where your essay is headed? Your structure can really make a big difference in helping just the reader as they're speed reading through your essay, making sure they're easily able to just check off the boxes of the things that they're looking for. Um, I saw a question come in. Are there topics to be avoided? A great question, yes. Um, so we wanna make sure that whatever you choose to write about, um, something that we have students focus on is unexpected insights and unique themes. So an example of an expected insight um, and a common theme would be a student that writes about how sports taught her um, teamwork. And then the theme of the essay is hard work or something like that. So those are things that the reader is used to seeing. They see hundreds of essays with that, which makes them immediately uninterested and not wanting to follow through and read the rest of your story. So we wanna avoid essays that have common themes um, and form expected insights. So topics of essays where this usually happens is sports essays, arts and performance essays, um, community service essays. You have to be very careful. Um, essays about um, culture, family, role models. Uh, those three things can make for good essays, but they often tend to become about someone else outside of the student. So we want to make sure students are um, making themselves the main characters of their stories, right? It's your personal statement and they're wanting to learn more about you. All right, so those are off the top of my head, some topics to, topics to avoid. Um, another good question, thank you. All right, so we have one minute left. So let me um, just quickly run through some of these other points. Um, so how do I know when I'm ready to polish? Once you have your content and your structure solid and in place, you have asked yourself, okay, does this prove I'll be successful in college and beyond? Yes. Um, does it showcase my top trait? Yes. Um, once you have all that in place, then you're good to go ahead and start polishing your essay, looking for um, grammar, syntax, things like that. Do I need to meet the word count exactly? Um, or no, do I need to meet the word count exactly? You don't, but you wanna make sure that you are sharing as much as you possibly can. Remember each writing opportunity, um, well, each essay is a writing opportunity, right? You want to be able to share as much about who you are, with these readers as possible. So the closer that you can get to your word count, especially for those shorter essays is better. For longer essays, um, like there's some supplemental essays that are up, up to 800 words. You don't necessarily want to use all of that word count. Um, in those cases, you know, around a common app size, around 650, 700 words is fine because again, they're moving through these quickly. So you don't want to give them too much to look at. Um, I'm over the word count. How do I know what to cut? So you need to think about, um, like I mentioned, being, making sure you're being as clear and concise as possible. Oftentimes students feel like they need to write with very creative 
flowery language. So um, those are the first things that need to go because you don't have the word count and space for all of that. Um, and you're wanting to make sure that you are using all of your word count to just share information about you, um, your journey, the steps you took to um, improve and all of those things. So any kind of word count or stories or passages that aren't doing that, those should be the first things to go. And if you start looking at that, then you'll be able to very quickly whittle down, um, whittle down your essays. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, and then if you're way under word count, you're on the flip side of that. Think about how do I add more details? Think about exactly those same things. How can you further prove that you'll be successful in college and beyond? What's another experience that you have that showcases you putting your top trait into action? Um, making sure that you are just as detailed and specific as possible. All right, I saw some questions pop in. Should we strive for one main trait in our personal essays or for more? So you only need one top trait. If you really cannot decide between two, then I think that's fine. Um, but there's another misconception that students feel like they need to be um, like doing everything and good at everything in order to be accepted. But schools are looking to build well-rounded campuses as opposed to campuses filled with well-rounded people. All right, so they're looking for spikes of interest and you can think about those five traits as different spikes of interest. So if you're able to just pick one trait and showcase you really putting that trait into action, then that's fine. If you have traits that are tied, you can use your supplemental essays to showcase, um, showcase some other sides of you and what's important to you. All right, so something that's important, again, using all of your essays to strategically highlight all these different parts of who you are. Um, okay, so let me just finish up here. I have some other questions coming in, but we're over time. Thank you all for sticking around and being patient. Um, just a few more tips for finishing um, when you're up against the deadline. Set your own deadlines, all right, for each draft and revision. So you have something that you're working towards, uh, your own kind of checkpoint before the finish line to keep you on track. And then focus on the main thing that needs to be improved in each draft. So it can be very overwhelming, uh, especially early on to think about everything that needs to be done to get an essay to the finish line, but just focus on one thing at a time. All right. We talked about how important it is to ask for feedback on your writing so you can improve. Definitely do that. And maybe find an accountability partner to make sure they can, um, you can help each other stay on track for deadlines and goals and things like that. And then a huge time saver, understand when to reuse your own writing and similar supplements. So remember you do need to be specific for each school that you're applying to for different um, prompts, like why us, why this major, for example. But there are some prompts that are kind of similar where you can use similar experiences to answer different prompts for different schools. So just be smart about where you can properly recycle your content. All right, so I saw someone ask about um, the process of working with prompt. That's something that you're interested in. Um, you can set up an account um, using this link. And if you are wanting to learn more about working with prompt, because we don't usually talk about those details on these calls because it's not, working with prompt is not for everybody. Um, I'll drop a link in the chat for you to um, schedule a call to chat with one of our coaches for any additional questions that you may have. Give me just one second and I can drop that in there for you. But otherwise, that is it for our presentation this evening. If you have any other questions, I will be here. Um, feel free to ask anything you would like to know. Oh, I'm so, so glad. You're so welcome. All right, I just dropped the link in the chat. For anybody that's wanting to learn more about working with prompt or had specific questions about things like that, go ahead and use that link. But otherwise, you're so welcome. Otherwise, that's it for tonight. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, have a great rest of your night, everyone.
Ooh, a good question. Um, would it be okay to talk about specific things I noticed when I visited a campus? Absolutely. If you had the opportunity to visit a college campus, um, that's a huge bonus. And if you can share specific things that you notice, so avoiding things like, I loved the energy of the intellectual energy on campus, or it was so great seeing students out on the quad and interacting. Most students have quads and intellectual energy could be, you know, for any campus. But if you were able to talk about maybe um, a specific lecture you were able to see or um, a specific professor you were able to talk to that had some kind of meaningful um, conversation or anything like that, those are awesome things to include. You're welcome. All right, any other questions? I think we're just about done. You're welcome, have a good night. Students should start two months ago. <laughs> if your students haven't started, definitely make them start ASAP. Ideally, students would start um, spring semester of their junior year. So they can have time to start thinking about their personal brand, um, examining their experiences so they can see if there's any experiences that they need to kind of foster or create while they have more time in the summer. So the earlier, the better. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and shut things down. Thank you all so much again. Thank you for your wonderful questions. I hope this was helpful and we'll send out this recording um, sometime soon. Bye everyone, happy writing. <laughs>